Hey there, everybody. Welcome to my booth. I'm Jay Reaper. I love it. Rendering in Reaper is one of the things that I love most dearly about it. So today I'm going to show you how to render a couple of different projects in a couple of different ways so that you are prepared to tackle any job that comes across your desk with flair. Before we dive in, if you like this stuff and you find it helpful, if you're willing to take a couple of seconds and click those buttons down there, it helps other folks find us. And if you want to go a step further with your generosity and support us directly, there's a link to buy me a coffee in the description of this video. You can also use the uh, YouTube super thanks thing. Neither is necessary. Both are appreciated. Let's talk rendering. So first up here, I've got an audiobook project and I've made videos on this before, but in my audiobook projects, I record everything in one long track as you can see here all 17 so hours one long track and each chapter is denoted by project regions if you don't know how to set up a project region i'll show you really quickly for those who do feel free to scrub ahead but as i record my audio it goes off and blah 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 that's the end of a chapter if i double click in the timeline here bop bop it highlights everything that i have just recorded as a time selection then I can use the hotkeys shift R and it makes all of that a region. One thing to note, if I have a marker here, so say a character pops up, a word that I want to flag that I want to refer back to pops up and I put a marker using the hotkey M, boom, right in the middle there. If I then double click on the timeline, bop, bop, it only highlights up until that marker, wherever the latest one is. So if I make a region now, it only encompasses about half of my chapter, which is a small issue. A couple ways to fix that. I can either before setting up my region, drag my time selection all the way across manually, ta-da, and then do shift R, or I can do that conversely with my region, drag that region over after I've set it up, or my favorite solution, I've clicked, I set up my region, now, if I go down into my region marker manager, if you don't know how to open that, it's simple. View, region marker manager, give that a click and it'll pull open this nifty window for you. If you wanna dock it here, you can just right click on its title, dock marker manager in Docker. Ta-da, you're good to go. But for that latest chapter, you'll notice here that for every region, there is a start and an end time. Instead of dragging things around, taking a lot of time doing that, I can simply use the end time of the last chapter I set up, double click on that end time, command C for copy or left click copy. Then I go down to the start time of the chapter that I need to move because of that pesky marker. Double click, command R or command V, excuse me, and then enter You'll notice my region is now perfectly aligned with the previous chapter. A nifty little shortcut for you. Now, you're done. You've set everything up. All of your chapters are ready to go. Let's talk rendering. To open my rendering window, I can do Option Command R, ta-da, or conversely, File, Render, give that a click. It'll open it up. And now we'll talk through how to render your audiobook specifically. Some of these little buttons I'll cover in the next projects that we'll talk about for now. Source, don't worry about it. Master Mix is what we want for an audiobook like this. Next, the bounds. This is what it's going to render out specifically. For this, we can use entire project. Uh, we don't want that because it's going to render from the start to the finish of the project in one long file. Not super helpful for audiobooks. Time selection or custom time range can be helpful for audiobooks if you're pulling out a specific sample. So say if the author says, oh, for the retail sample, I'd like from two minutes in chapter eight up until eight minutes in chapter eight. You can use time selection, go to chapter eight and simply drag the time selection. It'll render that specific range. Or conversely, I can do custom time range and punch those numbers for times in here. Two different ways to do more or less the same thing. 
However, for audiobooks, we want all of the regions that we've already set up as chapters to be separate audio files. For that, we'll select all project regions or selected regions. All project regions obviously takes every region in your project and renders it out. Selected regions will look at the ones that you've highlighted in your region marker manager. So if I've got 80, it'll render just 80. If I press shift and click down, it'll select a range. If I need to do just a few, I can hold command, bop, bop, and it'll render those specific chapters. That's selected regions. Both are really helpful. For now, we'll say that I've got to render the whole project, all my chapters right now. So we'll select all project regions. Boom. We can see 107 regions are going to get rendered. We've got 107 there. Next, we need to tell this where we want the audio to go once it's rendered. So we'll take the directory. We'll click browse. Reaper notes your current or recent rendering locations. So you can find it here if you're working on something over a long time or if you have a specific folder that you use for a specific type of project. We'll make a new one for this. Browse for directory. And I've got a specific folder for all of my renders. And we'll make a specific folder for this project. New folder, audiobook. Then I'll click open and it will designate that, designate that as the location for my renders here. The next thing we need to do is tell this how we want our files to be named. We can do this any certain way, but because we've got 107 files, it might be kind of difficult to label them each individually. Plus, we've already done that work in the Region Marker Manager. We've got Chapter 84, Chapter 83. We've got the title card way up here. I don't want to have to do that twice. So in order to automate this, I'll go over here to Wildcards, Project Information, go down to Region, and now each audio file will render out with the name of the region. Easy as that. You can use other project information tags to render out specific information if that's helpful for you. For example, project will render the title of this project. So the sleeper will be what that says. Uh, I can do underscore and add more cards if I wish. So we'll do region. So now it would be the sleeper one or the sleeper title, etc. That's a great way to do it for some projects. Now, if you're doing an audiobook where the chapters are not numbers, if it's not chapter one, but rather it's like the encounter or Tuesday or something like that, where it's not a number, but it's uh, a name or a title, those can be difficult to organize once you've rendered them out. A way I get around that is I'll have, of course, the region name. So that's going to be giving me the title of each chapter. But at the beginning, so that everything is still in chronological order, I'll use the card region number. And I'll put a little underscore in between just to give it some space. And what that does is it'll be instead one title to chapter one. Or if this were some other book, it would be one title two, the encounter, three, Tuesday, etc. And that can be a helpful way to get around that as well. So we've set up everything. We know how we want it to be named. Now let's go into setting up our specs so that they're tuned to what we need for an audiobook. Fortunately, audiobooks across the board will require the same specs, provided you're uploading directly to a uh, distribution platform. If you're working with a publisher, they may ask you to export things separately. It'll be the same process no matter what you're being asked. Sample rate, whatever you're asked, may just make sure you're clicking it. Usually it's going to be either 48,000 or 44,100. For audiobooks, usually it's 44.1 kilohertz. Channels, more often than not, it's mono, so we can just leave it there. Sometimes folks will ask for stereo, so just keep an eye out. And then we can choose the file type here. MP3 is what we want for an audiobook. And then the bit rate is pretty much always 192 kbps. Ta-da! Our file is set. Now we get to do the cool part in Reaper is set loudness standards upon export. 
norm slash limit slash fade. Give that a click. By default, none of these will be clicked on. Starting off with normalize audiobooks. Norm we want to use RMS. That's the standards that audiobooks use. And for audiobooks, it has to be between minus 23 and minus 18 dB for the total file level. I just hit the middle, minus 20.5, and it's good for me usually. Now, the thing is, when you normalize an audio file, it may get louder than we want. Its peak value may be higher than the requisite minus 3 dB. So we'll put on a brick wall limit at peak minus 3 dB, and that'll just cut off all audio at minus 3 dB, and we're good to go. I put it at minus 3.1 just to give myself a little bit of extra headroom. Not necessary, just a personal preference. The last thing is the fade in, fade out. If you have audio, even if it's just room tone silence, and it just starts and stops abruptly, it can be just a little bit of a jarring listening experience, not in any extreme way, but throwing these fades on glides the sound in and glides the sound out, making it just a little bit smoother, and I think it's just a nice touch. So I throw a half a second fade in and about a second and a quarter fade out. And then you can choose how you want the fades to go. If you want them to go ramp up fast, if you want them to glide in slow, etc., you can choose that there. The last thing that might be helpful for some folks in audiobooks, there's this tail button. This will add this amount of silence at the end of your track. So if I click this, it will add however many milliseconds I want. Right now it's one second. So because audiobooks require between one and five seconds of silence at the end of each track, this can be a great way to shortcut that instead of having to manually make sure that each track ends precisely at that time. So we've set all that up. I always click save settings just in case I misclick or something goes awry, I can come back to this and then we can render it out and we're good to go. So that's how you render an audiobook. Now we'll jump over to a project that's just a slightly bit more complex. This is a podcast that I narrate. I read articles for this company every week. At the beginning here is a pre-roll ad. So this top track is my voiceover, and then this is the music bed. And then this second region is the article that I narrated for them. So this client, they want the pre-roll ad with music, without music. They want the article by itself, as well as the whole thing comped together into one long file. And they want all of that exported as a wave document or a wave audio file. So how would I do that? Let's start with the ad. So there are a couple ways to go about making sure that the music is either with it or without. The first one with music is easy. If we open the render, we want the master mix selected and we can do selected regions because we just want to render the ad. So I'll make sure that I've selected the ad here. It's gonna render this region and the whole master mix, which means it'll render both tracks at the same time. So I can just render that out, everything's set up, and it'll render both voiceover and music together. Now, if I want just the voiceover, I can do that in a couple ways. I can leave master mix on and simply mute the music track manually and just render it again, making sure to change my file name to no music. That way I make sure to not overlap or overwrite the same file twice and I know which one's which. Rendering like that totally works just fine. Alternatively, if I don't wanna keep muting and unmuting and take that guesswork out, I can go to source, source, selected stems or selected tracks. This will look at which track I currently have selected and render just that one or multiple tracks that I've selected. This can be helpful if say you're doing uh, scratch tracks with lots of different uh, characters, for example, that need to be rendered separately. I do this dubbing animation stuff a lot of the time. That can be really helpful. So selected track stems, I just have to make sure that I'm clicking on this track and it'll render just the voiceover without music. Uh, so that is how I would go about that. And the last thing I'll show you is if say the client wanted both MP3 and WAV files, instead of having to render them both separately, 
I can use my primary output, set up WAV files. Then I can just go over here, click on secondary output. Ta-da, whatever I want, it is up to me. I'll click an MP3 and I just go through the same process down here and it'll render both files simultaneously, which is just a really, really lovely feature. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions about this or anything else voiceover related, you can drop me a line below, reach out on my website. Uh, also, I'm thinking of setting up a Discord for our community. Someone asked about it. If you think that would be helpful, let me know as well. Until the next one of these, be well, and I'll see you there. Toodles.